Hey, welcome to the video on factoring a quadratic trinomial. This is the second part of our factoring trinomial series. And if you notice, this one's a little bit different than part one because in part two, we're going to have a number that is not one um, in front of the x squared term. So a will be um, a number other than one. But really, I'm going to show you how to factor it by grouping. And it's the same process and it's the same step um, so let me just go ahead and show you with an example here. We notice A is going to be 2, so that's a little different than part 1, but we still go ahead and solve it the same way. And let's go ahead and see what numbers multiply to get 2 times negative 6, so that's going to be 12, and add up to get 1. That's a positive 1. Well, the factors of 12... Well, pay attention here. This was a negative 6, so this should be a negative 12. And we know if it has to multiply to get a negative 12, but add up to get a positive 1, the larger number must be the positive. Because if the larger number was negative, like in this case, if 12 was negative, we would get negative 11. But, so we're going to use our, um, our thought process skills here, our, our number sense skills, to recognize that the larger number has to be positive when we add those two together. Negative 1 plus 12 is 11. Negative 2 plus 6 is going to be 4. And negative 3 plus 4 is going to be 1. And that's what we're looking for. We're looking for negative 3 and 4. So let's go ahead and rewrite our original equation. y is equal to 2x squared. Nothing has changed so far. And let's go ahead and put negative 3x plus 4x, and then minus 6. If we notice that positive 1x is right here, negative 3x plus 4x is going to be a positive 1x. We just um, made it look a little different. Still the same equation, though. They're still exactly the same. So now let's take these first two and the second two, and we will find the greatest common factor of those terms. So if we have 2x squared minus 3x, this is going to be 2 times x times x minus 3 times x. And you notice that they have an x in common. So that is the x that we're going to put outside. And now what's inside? Well, inside, we still have 2x, and we still have negative 3. So, y is equal to x times 2x minus 3. And now let's come over here and work out a 4x minus 6. Um, 4 and 6. What is the greatest common factor between 4 and 6? I believe it is a 2. So how do we get 4 with the 2? It'll be 2 times 2. And then there's the x. And how do we get 6 with a 2? It's going to be 3 times 2 maybe? 3 times 2? Um, I could have written it as a uh, negative 2 times 3, because this is a negative 6. I could have written it as a negative 2 times 3. You just have to recognize that if you're going to circle the 2, that this negative sign stays with the 3. These are things you should be thinking about as you go along and do these problems, is how can we make the parentheses that we're going to get here look like this parentheses. Okay, now let's figure out what they have in common. I see a 2, and I see a 2, and that's the only thing I see that they have in common. So let's go ahead and pull that 2 outside. And what would be left inside? You have 2x, and you have minus 3. And now this 2 that we pulled outside, would that be a positive or a negative 2? 
because we can't write it. Let me erase this. Because we cannot write this to look like this. Because there's no operation there. There has to be, uh, if there's no, I'm, I'm sorry, if I said there's no operation there, there's no visible operation there. And you know if there's no visible operation, then it's multiplication, and that's not the case. That's not what is actually happening here. That's not what we're doing. This 2 down here is a positive 2, so we should put a positive 2 there. And our final answer, those are in one parenthesis, and these are in another. Okay. The question told you to find the x-intercepts, so that means if you find the x-intercepts, if you're finding the x-intercepts, like say this is an x-intercept, and say this one's an x-intercept, y value is 0, y value is also 0. So the y value is always 0 when you're finding x-intercepts. So if the y value is 0, so y value is 0, what can we plug in for x to equal 0? Or what can we plug in for x to equal 0? And that's what we're trying to do here. So that's the reason why we set each parenthesis equal to zero and solve them out because this will be the x-intercepts. The equation on the left, add three to both sides and divide by two. So x is equal to three halves. The equation on the right, subtract two from both sides x is equal to negative 2. And so when we look here, we have two answers. x equals negative 2 and x equals 3 halves. Now you remember this, this graph is a parabola. And since a is positive, it's going to open up. And since... Um, a is 2, which is a little bit larger than 1. That means that the graph is going to be narrower than if A was equal to 1. Y-intercept should be around negative 6, letter C. So let's take this thought here that we have. X equals 3 halves and X equals negative 2. And these were the x-intercepts. So let's look on the graph here. x-intercept of negative 2, x-intercept of 3 halves. And you notice I put a yellow dot there at those intercepts, and that's what we have. And you're looking at the parabola of the equation, y equals 2x squared plus x minus 6. And what you're trying to do when you find the x-intercepts, like Like I said, if you notice, you find the x-intercepts. What you're really doing is you're finding, you're also finding the roots or the solutions. Okay, um, those three terms go hand in hand, and you need to recognize that. So if you're finding the roots, it's where the graph crosses the x-axis. And so if you're looking at it graphically, it's easy to tell. Or if you need to factor it, like we did on the previous slide, you can also do that. Okay, let's go ahead and try this one. Let's try this one. We have to find 9 times 16. 9 times 16, and they're both positive. So 9 times 16, I believe, is 100.
144, positive 144, and it has to add up to be 24. This should be an easy one because 144 is a special number. And when you know, recognize that it's a special number, uh, you know which two numbers multiply to get 144 and add up to get 24. 144 is 12 squared. And 12 plus 12 is 24. So we're going to break down 24x into positive 12x plus 12x. 12x plus 12x is equal to 24x. So we're good to go. You have plus 16 and your 9x squared in front. And let's factor out. So we have 9x squared plus 12x. So what's the greatest common factor between 9 and 12? What number goes into 9 that also goes into 12 and the largest number that goes into both? So um, in this case, it looks like 3. 3 goes into 9. So 3 times 3 is 9. And there's x squared. And 3 goes into 12. So 3 times 4 is 12. And there's your x. So let's figure out what they have in common. I can circle a 3x, and I can circle a 3x. And that's a positive 3x that we're circling. So that's the number that goes out front, 3 times x. And what do we have left inside? You have 3x left inside, and you have positive 4 left inside. So y is equal to 3x on the outside of the parentheses and 3x plus 4 on the inside. Okay, so we've 9x squared plus 12x. We have it worked out there. And now let's go ahead and go with 12x plus 16. What is the... What's the largest number that goes into 12 that also goes into 16? I'm thinking... 4, and that was a positive 4 that did that, so let's put positive 4 there. And so positive 4 times 3 times x will give us 12x, and positive 4 times 4 will give us 16. What do they have in common? positive 4. So we can pull that positive 4 out. I guess I probably could have circled that plus sign. Um, and then what goes inside? 3x is left. And I know I took that positive sign there. So what do we put with this 4? It's still a positive 4. Because positive 4 times positive 4 is positive 16. And so this is where we're at. Now let's bring all this up here. We say plus 4 and 3x plus 4 goes inside the parentheses. And if you notice what's inside the parentheses is the same thing. So we're doing good here. So y is equal to 3x plus 4 that gets one parenthesis. And 3x plus 4 goes into the other one. And if we're trying to find the x-intercepts, we set each one of those equal to 0. So 0 is equal to 3x plus 4. And I can go ahead and set the second parenthesis equal to 0, but if you notice, it's going to work out to be the same answer. So I don't really need to solve both of them out. I'm going to divide both sides by 3. 
So x will equal negative 4 over 3. x will equal negative 4 thirds. And so, um, just a quick sketch. Negative 4 thirds is somewhere, uh, somewhere like this. We know since A is positive, it opens up, and since A is 9, it's going to be fairly narrow. It's not a very good uh, sketch because it doesn't look like this one. There's a parabola. Something like that. That's just a quick sketch there. And I wanted to show you that negative 4 thirds, that was the only root because that the parabola sits on the x-axis. So it's sitting on the x-axis, which means that there's only going to be one root. And um, that would be negative 4 thirds. This one here, we have to find two numbers that multiply to get whatever positive 20 times 6 would be, which is 120. And then they have to add up to get 23. They have to add up to get 23. Well, we know 1 and 120 is 121. That's it's not probably the number we want to start with. Let's start with something like, well, we know 10 and 12. That's 22. So we're close there. So you should be trying to figure out, um, you know, in your calculator, you could go 120 divided by, like, say, 9, okay? And that is not going to be an integer. It's going to be a decimal there. It is 13 and 1 third. So we're looking for something that's going to be an integer about 120 divided by 8. Since 9 didn't work, let's try 8. 120 divided by 8 is going to give you 15. Well, let's try 8 and 15. 8 plus 15 is 23, which is the number we're looking for. So 8 and 15 are our two numbers that we're going to be breaking down 23x into. Let's go ahead and do that. Y is equal to 20x squared plus 8x plus 15x plus 6. And you might ask, um, could I have written this as 15x plus 8x? And that's fine. You could you could have written it either way um, because you're still going to work it out to get the same the same roots there, the same the same x-intercepts. So either way is fine. I just, I just see it right here as 8 and 15, so that's the way I write it. If I would have seen it as 15 and 8, I would have written it this way. So either way is fine. Underline those two and underline those two. Why don't you go ahead and try and pause the video, see if you can figure out what the greatest uh, factors here are, the greatest common factors in both of those, and see if um, you can uh, do this part. I'm going to go ahead and work it out and check yours in a minute. So you have 20x squared plus 8x. I know the greatest common factor between 20 and 8 is going to be a 4. So 4 times 5 times x times x. That is 20x squared. 4 times 2 times x, that's going to be 8x. What do they have in common? 4 and x, 4 and x. Just put that outside. And what's left? 5x and... That should have been like a loop there. Positive 2. So y is equal to 4x outside and 5x plus 2 inside. On the right side, let's do 15x 
plus 6. Greatest common factor that goes into 15, that also goes into 6. 3. So 3 times 5 times x will give you 15x. And 3 times 2 gives you 6. And we can see what they have in common, which will be a 3. And is that 3 positive or negative? It is a positive 3. And what's left inside? 5x and positive 2. So back over here to our equation, you put that up there. So you say plus 3 and 5x plus 2 inside the parentheses. Now let's go ahead and work it out. Um, those two will get their own parentheses. And these two will also get their own parentheses. And so from here, set each one equal to 0. So 0 is equal to 5x plus 2. 0 is equal to 4x plus 3. Each parenthesis is set equal to 0. On the left side there, let's go ahead and solve this out for x. We subtract 2 from both sides. So negative 2 is equal to 5x. And we divide by 5. x is equal to negative 2 fifths. On the right side, let's go ahead and subtract 3 from both sides. And then we divide by 4. So x is equal to negative 3 fourths. And so there are your two x-intercepts. Negative 2 fifths and negative 3 fourths. Hey, we're going to take a short break here, and then I will have uh, part two of this part two on a video for you. So the next video is going to be part two. So we're going to have part two of part two after the break.